Okay, so in this video, we will consider a special case of integration by parts by trying to integrate e to the 2x sine of 3x dx. And I will call this integral i, and this will be, or there, the reason for this should be apparent later on the solution. So as always, we have to choose our u. And here there are two functions, e to the 2x sine of 3x. And if you remember the rule of thumb, and choosing u is so that the derivative gives the greatest simplification. If you differentiate e to the, to the 2x, you get 2 e to the 2x, which is basically the same function, so no simplification there. If you differentiate sine of 3x, you'll get cos of 3x times 3, again, essentially the same function, no simplification there either. So it looks like by part is not going to work here. Well, okay. So then what? Well, let's still do it. Let's see what comes out. So let's u, let u be e to the 2x. Then as always, everything else must be dv. So sine of 3x dx is dv. To find our du from u, we differentiate u with respect to x. And again, by the chain rule, we differentiate the exponential function, we get the same function back. But there is still the 2x times the derivative of 2x, which is 2. So, multiplying by dx, du is, I'll write the 2 first, 2, e to the 2x, dx. So we have our du. Now to obtain v from dv, as always, we integrate. But dv is sine of 3x dx. And the integral of sine of 3x dx is quite simply negative cosine of 3x over 3. And if you're not clear about this, we'll differentiate this function and verify that you get indeed sine of 3x. So this is now our v. So this is our first application of biparts. And as you'll see, we'll be stubborn here, even though, and you'll see in a second, that it seems that we're getting nowhere we'll apply by parts again. So now let's see what comes out. So, I will equal uv, so e to the 2x, times v, so times negative a third cos of 3x, so uv minus the integral of v du. Well, v is negative cos of 3x over 3, times du, 2e to the 2x dx. Let's clean this up a little bit. Negative a third will pull up front, so we get negative, if you want, e to the 2x over 3, times cos of 3x. And here there's a 2 thirds, negative, negative is a positive, so it gives us positive 2 thirds. I'll write the e to the 2x before the cosine, so e to the 2x cos of 3x dx. So now this is where we're at after applying integration by parts once. And here's the new integral. Now if you look back to the previous integral, is this any better than this? And the answer is no, it's basically the same thing, the only difference is that sine was replaced by cosine. But sine and cosine, as far as integration goes, are basically the same. And so this integral is essentially the same as the original one. So it looks like we've applied by parts, and we got basically nowhere. Well, let's be stubborn here. If we quit now, we get nothing. So we're saying, well, all right, let's try by parts again. Let's give this a second go. So I'll take u 
to be e to the 2x and dv is everything else. And a key observation here is that this will actually work out surprisingly, but we have to be consistent. We let u be e to the 2x, we have to make the same choice. If you let u be cos of 3x and dv be e to the 2x dx, you will get nothing. You'll go back to the integral being equal to itself, which tells you nothing. But be aware that you could have let u be sine of 3x, then dv be e to the 2x dx, and then u would have been the trig function, and dv once again the exponential with dx, and this would also work. There was no reason why we would prefer e to the 2x instead of sine of 3x with a choice of u in the first place. We just made a choice. The key point is when you have these exceptional examples of biparts, once you commit to a given function for your u, if you apply biparts again, stick with it. Now let's see what comes out. Well, u is the same as before, so of course du is the same. It's still 2 e to the 2x dx. And here, I'll make it short, to get to the v, we integrate dv, and if you integrate cos of 3x dx, you should get sine of 3x over 3. And once again, if you're not clear about this, differentiate sine of 3x over 3, and you will obtain cos of 3x. So now that we have what we need, we can perform our second application of integration by parts. So let's see. I'll write it here because I'm going to need a bit more space. So our integral i is equal to negative e to the 2x over 3 cos of 3x plus 2 thirds times and here open the brackets as 2 thirds multiply all of the integral of u dv so it must multiply all of uv minus the integral of v du. So as I've said the integral of u dv is u v so I'll bring in the over 3 times the exponential so e to the 2x over 3 times the sine of 3x So the integral of u dv is u v minus the integral of v sine of 3x over 3 du 2 e to the 2x dx. Well, let's again clean this up a little bit. So i is equal to negative e to the 2x over 3 cos of 3x. If I multiply out here, I will have 2 over 9 e to the 2x sine of 3x. And now, don't forget that the 2 thirds multiply also this integral, but we also have a 2 thirds if we factor it out. So we'll have 2 thirds times 2 thirds, which will give us negative 4 over 9 times the integral of, we're left with the sine and the exponential, I'll put the exponential first. So e to the 2x sine of 3x dx. And now we ask again, you're saying, okay, after applying by parts twice, we get that the original integral is equal to this function minus 4 over 9 times this integral. And we ask, is this any better than what we started with? And if you go back, i is the integral of e to the 2x sine of 3x dx. Integral of e to the 2x sine of 3x dx. So this is right back to where we started. We've applied integration by parts twice and we obtained that i was equal to this function minus 4 over 9 times itself. So it looks like we've just gone in circle and that we get nothing. Or do we? Hmm. We applied by parts twice, and we got the integral being equal to this function minus 4 over 9 times itself. But think of it, now we have an equation where we know what these functions are, and the unknown is this integral i. Well, let's just solve for it. 
purely algebraically from the equation we cooked up using by parts twice. So I'll drop this in favor of i because we are trying to solve for i. So what do we have? We have i equals, and here I'll give this a shorthand name. This is a function of x. Call it anything you want. I'll call this f of x. So what do we have? i equals f of x minus 4 over 9 times i. And we can easily solve for i. Send negative 4 over 9 i on this side, that will become positive. So we'll have i plus 4 over 9 i equals f of x. You can add, as i is 9 over 9 i, and 9 plus 4 is 13. So you get a 13 over 9 i equals f of x. And of course, you can multiply both sides by 9 over 13, 9 over 13, and i is 9 over 13 times f of x. And now don't forget that i was an indefinite integral, so we need to add the arbitrary constant of integration. And now we can write the conclusion i being, again, the original integral, which we were trying to solve. We were trying to integrate e to the 2x sine of 3x dx, and now we've solved for it. So i, the integral of e to the 2x, sine of 3x dx, equals 9 over 13 times this function, f of x, And of course, plus the arbitrary constant of integration. So there you have it, the integral of e to the 2x sine of 3x dx using by parts twice and then solving for the integral in a given equation allows us to conclude that the integral of e to the 2x sine of 3x dx is this expression. And we can simplify a little bit, right? There are common terms that can be factored here. So let's do so. So we have a 9 over 13. We can factor a 1 third from both of these. So we factor a third, it's gone. You factor 3 from 9, you're left with 3. And we can factor an e to the 2x. So if you factor it, it's gone. It's gone. And what are we left with? There's a negative and a positive, so I'll write the positive term first. We have 2 thirds sine of 3x. And a negative cos of 3x. Plus, of course, a constant c. Here we can simplify as 9 over 3 is 3. So what are we left with finally? 3 e to the 2x over 13, or if you prefer, 3 over 13 e to the 2x times 2 thirds sine of 3x minus cosine of 3x plus, of course, c. And this is the best that we can do. So if you go back, the lesson here is sometimes you have to be stubborn. You have to, even though it looks like it's not going to work out, keep going. And in this case, it really paid off. So we had our integral. We applied by parts. We got an integral that was almost the same. We applied by parts again. We got back the exact same integral. And it looks like we, from this, are getting nowhere. But the key is now we have an equality where we know everything but the integral. And so we can easily algebraically solve for the integral within the equation. And that's just a matter of 
putting it back in and simplifying the expression. And that's it.